Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Jenny from the Chopping Block, Recipes for Success. I missed you guys this week, but tonight we have an amazing guest that I'm super excited to introduce you to, Ron Yatim. Yes. Uh, yay! And Ron actually has an ask for us all. Um, he's looking for donations for his film that he has, um, he wrote, he directed, he produced um, actually during COVID. And I'm gonna post the trailer in the caption here, but it's amazing what he's done. And I'm just excited to talk about him more about what inspired this film and the journey throughout it. Um, so Ron, without further ado, my first question to you is, how, what inspired this film and how did this, how did this all come about in your world? So really what inspired me in the comfort zone is um, talk about unity and connection between people. Uh, I start feeling that as much as the time go by, I feel like people and technology getting us more separated from one another. And instead of getting close, we're really getting into our own world. We're putting ourselves in this comfort zone uh, of our life that basically doesn't really gives us so much growth, maybe sometimes financial, but I'm not sure how mental growth and, and happiness and like looking for your purpose in life. And when you find your purpose, normally you find your happiness too. That's how I see it. So I really wanted people to understand what happens when you connect one another and then the experience of living in the moment when you are being present and you get out of your head, like what I could, what I should, what I would do, right? It's like you're more really pre in the present moment and letting life kind of taking you into this roller coaster ride. Sorry, I said absolutely. Thank you, Lisa, for watching. Uh, unity and connection, absolutely. And Ron, I, I, there was a line in the in the trailer that I just wanted to highlight and ask you about, like what inspired it. Um, and I'm gonna like, I, it was something along the lines like I had to work really hard uh, to to be myself, like in a world yeah. where that wasn't allowed. What is what's yeah, exactly you said, like that? I had to work really hard to be able to be who I am in a world that tells me I have no right to be my authentic self. So the movie is, is empowering and normalizing black trans women. I don't know if the audience or people know, but the US has announced epidemic toward black trans women because so many has been murdered since the beginning of 2020. And actually just recently in October 5th, in MacArthur Park, MacArthur Park here in Los Angeles. And there was a gorgeous trans women of color activist that had been stabbed to death in the park um, just about a week ago. So unfortunately, it's it haven't been finished and it's still going on. And it's it's those girls had to work really, really hard to do who I am and our society don't let us necessarily to be our authentic self. So I really hope that this movie will inspire people um, to want to connect and understand that, you know, tr trans woman is a woman, you know what I mean? And like, and you know, some of them look more cis women and some of them still in transformation and, and wherever stage they are, it's fine. And we should see and accept them as women and connect to them. Right, so it's all about unity and connection. Beautiful and women, people, yeah, beautiful women, talented <laughs> women, and you know what? Women's that we can study so much from. Right, mm -hmm. it's like it's like they're they're waking up and they are living their own truth. Talking about living in the moment, who can live more in the moment and being present than a person that understanding that his gender is different from the gender maybe that he burn with and he's going out and he's living his truth. He's living the moment. It's people that we need to learn, be inspired, connect and accept. And whenever I introduce to trans women and trans women of color, because 
you know, African American people in America is going through difficulty now that we can see with the Black Lives Matter. And so just add to it being a trans woman on top of that, right? It's like it's a double difficulty, <laughs> you know, and and like seeing those women just like rocking it and like star in the movie. She's a rock star, she's a colorful, she's she doesn't give a, an F and uh, you know, a damn, and like she's like she's being herself you know and she's a character that i hope a lot of us would get to connect to in our life and observe and and take things to our personal life to our personal courage of living Beautiful. in this world absolutely and what about her character um like means the most to you like you say she's vibrant she she's authentically herself mm -hmm. and you know, she doesn't care what other people think, but what's like, what's like the heart of her character that just makes the message that you're trying to convey, like come out in her, within her. Like what makes it be so, um, what do I love about her or? Her character. Actually, when I wrote her character, she's very, she's very similar to me in some way, but she's way more, I have a lot to learn from her. But like, you know, but um, I'm a free spirit, or at least I see myself as a free spirit. Um, I have done in my life a lot of sacrificing in order to follow my dream. I left a job that used to give me a lot of money, but very little bit of happiness. Uh, got me very far from my dream. Got me a nice car or a nice place to live in Hawaii, but but I didn't, I didn't walk up happy. And I was thinking about what I could, what I should, what I would be. And like, and, and experiencing star, these characters is, I needed to one day give everything up. I met, I went to New Orleans for a vacation and I met this producer four hours before my flight when I went there by myself to the Mardi Gras. And I told him, if you let me do whatever you do, my dream is to make an American films that are going to change the world perception and to create entertaining projects that will make this world better. And through the American production, we can actually deliver a project worldwide, right? It's like all the people are here. And, and I met this guy four hours before my flight and I told him, let me work for you for free and teach me what you can do. And I'm not going to take my flight back to Maui. I was living in Maui at that time and I stay here living in New Orleans and like, and like, you know, and you don't pay me, like, let me just have this experience. And he told me, go get your flight. You're crazy. I don't know you. And, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't know you, man. Like, you know, you and your accent, just take your flight back. And like, but you're very sweet and let's be in touch. You know, it's like, it was a very, 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 very nice person. And and uh, when I got to the plane and when I already like got into the gate and went on the plane, I got a text message, I check your email and the email say like, I love your enthusiasm and like your dreams and no, no, no. And he's like, if you're as crazy to do what you said you're going to do, come in Monday, fill up paperwork, don't take wow. your flight and I'm going to actually hire you with money because I know what you're going to bring into the film. I have nobody to put you as a position, but you'll be my personal assistant and um what i've done is i just like told to the flight attendant i'm so sorry i need to get my bags <laughs> right <so> away awesome. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i actually never been to maui since you know that was five years ago Whoa. Never been since to maui i call my friend i'm like pack my house send it in boxes sell my car and basically i went in this adventure of the unknown leaving the unknown moving to louisiana i don't know nobody in louisiana working for a person that i don't know i just met three hours ago and i put all the trust in him but my intuition and my heart told me you gotta do that and you're gonna give up so much of a lifestyle in order to do that but you know what to make and i actually say it in the movie too it's like you have dreams, you got to do sacrificing. You got to sacrifice to make your dream come true. Mm -hmm. Nobody can come and knock on your door and just be like, yo, here, I got you the perfect plan. And <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you can sacrifice anything. And here, your dream is coming <laughs> true. You know what I mean? There is that exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, unfortunately, you know, I wish life were like this, but it's, 
I don't know. Yeah, Sometimes so. the, the fun part is like the grit, you know, like going after it and making it happen and who yeah. you become throughout the process. Yeah. Yeah. And when the opportunity comes, normally I always say in order to take it to if you want to go three, like sometimes in order to go one step up, you got to take two step down because after you take these two step down, there is the three steps forward. You know what I mean? Right after it, you know, so you give up something, you earn three, you give up one thing, you earn five. You know what I mean? And like, and, and, and that was at least my, my experience. And this is star character that I love so much is like, living with courage and living with your intuition and doing what feels for you right and being authentic to yourself beautiful and i just i want to ask you a question just regarding that because i'm so curious like when you when you came to louisiana was your did you set an intention before you got there or did you, you know just what? like so the, yes, I did. <laughs> so you know, definitely the definitely the law of attraction plays a very strong um, character because I remember landing. I was supposed to go with the, with a couple uh, friends, couples, and they canceled on me literally in like the last minute, like four days before the trip. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm a trombone player too. Like I love music, I love jazz and funk. And I'm like, I'm just gonna go to New Orleans and I'm gonna do it even if it's by myself. And when I got there, I remember walking in the street and that was in 2015 and Louisiana used to be like the the tax break of the film industry. Like every movie, oh, wow. I didn't know every that. movie show. Yeah, they had the highest tax break in Louisiana. So all the films, all the biggest, like, you know, Fantastic Four, or like the, the big, like a hundred, two hundred million dollar budget, they all came to Louisiana because they would get the highest tax break, uh, tax uh, break back. So when I remember walking in the street and I would see all these, like, and this is from Hawaii, right? Where barely you have anything shot there. And suddenly I walk in the street and I'm like, trailers, trailers, like trucks. Like, here is a Hollywood movie. Here is Tom Cruise feeling that. Here is this feeling that. And I'm like, what is this? This is heaven? Like, you know, this is like, that's what I want to do. It's, it's my heaven because I was like in the streets of Hawaii and I'm like, like to, dreaming to see a trailer or like, you know, some like production happening. And there was nothing. And I came and I remember going to the hotel in that night and say to myself and i wrote it on my book and i wrote like you know my notes manifestation book whatever you call it so um i wrote it and i say to myself like this if i'm gonna find a producer or a person in the film industry that will adopt me i'm not taking my flight back and that was in my first day literally i said that and i didn't know anybody i went by myself i don't know anybody there you know, it's like the how I met that guy in the last day was crazy. It's like a person that I met in a bar a night before that I talked to and I told him, that's why I dream and I'm willing to knock on doors and I say to myself that I live. And he's like, well, you are so passionate. So let me go back to my, he was an electrician, the guy that connected me with him. He's an electrician in the film industry and he works on big production. And now we are very good friends. And um, he's like, let me go home. It was in 2 a.m. He wrote me an email with like a couple of producer and the addresses and phone numbers. And he's like, well, if you're that passionate, go and knock on the door. I'll provide you the information. And it's like amazing. I let it right go now. through the whole trip. Yeah, I let it go. I enjoyed my time in New Orleans and manifested it. But then I let it go, which I feel like it's such an important part in manifesting. And I just had fun. And I trusted yeah. in the universe to, to flip it. And he did. So <laughs> it's all so, flowing back to like what I asked. So it was great. You have a remarkable story. And I just, I have this question. It's screaming at me because I am obsessed with the way that your, your film looks visually. Mm, so can uh, you tell you. me, <laughs> a, a, like, it's amazing. Like the oh, way it's okay. filmed. Um, yeah, I, I cannot wait to see it fully. But can you tell me a little bit like, that style, like what inspired that style, how you got so good at, at that? Um, I, yes, yes, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, I wanted to create something that like, that is different because our society is so, 
you know, locked on like how things need to look, right? So if like, so I decided that I want to do a social justice movie that is rock and roll. I love rock and roll. So the whole movie is going to be a rock and roll film and it's happening through the night so we can live in the moment. So I wanted to create this, I call it, it's a neon rock and roll roller coaster. Because when you're living in the moment, you are in a roller coaster and the impossible is possible. So I wanted to create this like very adventurous ride of like, um, it's almost like jumping on a Disneyland ride that everything is so perfect, you know, it's like the colors and the this and the, the turns and it's always with the right music. And so, yeah, so I, I, I just really wanted to create something that it will be like adventurous and, and different. And then normally you don't get in rock and roll and a lot of african-american people being um represented right we think rock and roll it's always put us in a different vibe which is why like what's the reason for that so and definitely normally um transgender content is not being um presented in the rock and roll sound you know what i mean it's like vogue on disco and this and like you know what i mean and 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 why too so, you know, so I'm going to make a rock and roll movie when we have a badass black trans rock star that taking us through this whole color psychedelic, I like to call adventure because, you know, it's again, when you live in the moment, crazy things can happen and and everything almost feel like a dream. You know what I mean? It's like the best way that I like to explain to people, it's like thinking about sometimes I'm sure it's happened to all of us. Like you're jumping on a flight and you have a person sitting next to you that you don't know this person. <laughs> and he's telling you like one word that opening a conversation that goes for the whole flight, whether it goes <laughs> for five hours, it's happened to me in a flight of 12 hours. You know what I mean? And as long as the flight, you guys get so connected and like, you know, <laughs> best friends and grooving it, you know what I mean? And like, you're talking about all these things and like, you know, all this information and answers are coming into you. And like, there is always something in common and like, like you know what i mean and when then when this person is living you're almost leaving the plan and you're gonna be like i want to go with them to like have a drink there and then let's go to that person. like you want to adopt them to be your best friend and the funny thing that even if we switch phone number or email we never stay in touch again because people are coming not always sometimes yeah people are coming for a reason and a season you know yeah I mean? yeah oh, i love that the moment we, yeah so it's like we don't need to like look for like okay now we had a great time we're friends forever and you guys gonna see it in the movie that it's like i'm not gonna give you the spoiler but like you know but this is how it happens in life it's like it's like you know amazing things can happen and and then when it's finished you're like what just happened to me and like how do i bring that moment and i can't and but you know what we grow we grow a human being, we grow about our decision, we're reinventing our energy, we're reinventing ideas in our head. It's it's challenging our brain to wanna expand and grow, I feel. Definitely, and you know, it's like, I feel like films, like I love films. I rarely watch TV, but I am obsessed with movies. My family mm -hmm. is very big into movies. We have Oscar parties and name it, and, um. I just, I love the way like it takes you places sometimes like music, you know, where you won't go on your own. And my question to you is like, I, I find this to be like, you know, seeing a lot of the Oscar winners, it's always like bringing light to a cause that's important that wouldn't always be told, yeah. you know, a, a story that wouldn't always be told. And, you know, it's almost like a documentary would like, is that, part of your mission is or like how does that fit in like why isn't it a documentary like what like how what are you able to do more so by the film um category um, that makes any sense. <laughs> mm, rewind <laughs> yeah, just need, like, I'm sorry. i was processing my thought as i went along but i'm just saying like <laughs> Like documentaries, like for me, honestly, like I would personally, I would want to watch your film because it's, it has all of those elements 
and all of those emotions, you know, in a storyline that's like being it's you're t you're telling a story, right? Right. <clears throat> in a different way. Like what I guess my question would be how does this how is this better than say like a, a formal documentary? Um <clears throat> I love the power of narrative because you know, we let ourselves getting into somebody else's world, which documentaries done that too. I'm more of a narrative kind of a person because documentary is kind of presenting you a reality. And with narrative, I feel like you letting your audience dive into the reality that you created. So when mm -hmm. I'm creating a narrative, I can control it and, and I can control, you know, I think that and that's what drove me into into like you know investing my time so much into cinema and and, and building a career in, in in the cinematic narrative world is i think that the movies and the cinema are designing the human brain's mind i mean we are seeing stories from watching disney as kids or even like younger than that and and we are basically looking at those heroes that living in this movie and they take decisions they take decisions if somebody cheat them or if somebody done to them this and somebody done to them this and and many of our decisions is um is based on those heroes you know what i mean and and, and we can learn what's a big deal and what's not a big deal hmm. what if i touch that it's hot and i'm gonna get burned so i don't want to touch that and maybe i touch it a little bit like this like you know what i mean and it's not that Hot, you know what I mean? And I can try to do that. So we really get like this is I feel like that's how our mind and brain works. So we can learn lessons, valuable life lessons through these characters. Exactly. I mean, our brain, our conscious mind is building from two things. Our conscious mind is building from the experiences that we had in our life and knowledge. So we consume knowledge through our family, our surrounding books, news, right? Things like that. But then we also have the experiences that we're going through. And when you're watching a narrative film, you're going through an experience. You're going through an adventure. So, and, and me as a, like specifically here, I wrote, directed it. So it's really gave me the opportunity to hear what you wanna hear and where I put the high stakes and where do I put the lower stakes? I can, I have an amazing editors and producers and like amazing artists that that is part of this group of creating the comfort zone and and it's like you know we really worked hard to take care that those stakes will be high wherever we want them to be high so you're gonna get a tear whenever we want you to get a tear and feeling like goosebumps you know what i mean and and and, and going like putting you into this like adventure that the narrative can do yeah. Hmm. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So I wanted to highlight you again. I said earlier, like you you shot this during COVID and you know, which is challenging in itself, but what were some of the, the good parts of that and how did that like how is that timing right? Um, you know, I don't know how this timing came right. This is crazy. <laughs> it came in like uh... <laughs> I actually been pushing to create this movie for, I wrote it about two years ago, almost like, you know, a little less than two years ago. It takes time and I almost done it and it failed and I got the money and it failed. And like, you know what I mean? And there was so much like of a journey with this movie of it's happening, it's not happening, it's happening, it's not happening. Um, so that was a little bit difficult and then the COVID-19 allowed me to work with two brilliant talents and amazing producer uh, that jumped on board because people didn't work, you know what I mean? And, and like all the people that normally get booked by studios and, 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 and like, you know, and net networks and, and stuff like that, they are like nobody working. We're in the COVID time. So I'm like, and with all what's happening with the Black Lives Matter movement and, and those protests that I showed up to some of uh, because I'm supporting that, it's, it's put me in so much fire 
you know what I mean, to to want to create. Because I'm like, I can walk and protest, and it's important to do it, because every person that protests in any kind of a protest, you show your, even if you're there with a car next to it, or walking from far away, you know what I mean? Your presence is important to support the group, if you support that group, or whatever they're protesting for. And I'm like, how do I can create my protest to a bigger group of people? Like, you know, how can I create a protest for a change, a social change, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and I'm like, now that's the time to release the comfort zone. And I was meditating for about a month every day for about 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, manifesting and saying thank you and, and all that and kind of putting all the comfort zone in the side. And one day I woke up in the morning and I'm like, I'm going to rewrite the whole script. I know exactly how I'm going to like, like, you know, get it very like, on point to to where it needs to happen right now and i just done that and send it to um, alex mcnichol and alexandra gray that they're starring in the movie and they're brilliant brilliant actors and um they loved it and we started to rehearse and i started to roll the ball and everything just happened you know what i mean we all these amazing angels that the universe has oh, sent I love it. happen yeah <laughs> And I want to ask you, because I saw in the trailer that you are starring in the film as well. And I have a couple <laughs> yeah. of questions regarding this, because like you do so much, like you wrote it, it's your it's your vision. It's like a Rocky story, you know, like you you you're writing it, you're you put the grit in, you put the time in. It's your passion. How do you do it all? Like, how do you juggle all these positions and like what fuels that? um definitely the labor of love is is fueling like non-stop energy you know what i mean and it's like and this is why i'm like do what you love because i think you're frozen <laughs> oh you're back okay i heard uh, i heard do what you love i don't know if it was frozen on everyone else's end but i i heard do what you love and it paused and i'm like all right i gotta <laughs> pop up this and feel this <laughs> yeah no, it's like you know, you you do what you love, and like you know, and labor of love, and 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 I actually study acting from the age of eight or nine till the age of twenty, twenty one. I'm originally from Israel, from Tel Aviv, and uh, I was an, a stage actor there as a kid, and my world always was about art and entertainment and creation and and creating for a change and open people's minds through creation. So I'm just like, you know, I'm acting. I acted in a few TV shows here in, in the States and, and movies here too. So I'm like, why not? You know, it's like we need as much as diversity and inclusion in our, in with, with the heroes we put on screen. And then I'm I really love it. I was, so, <laughs> I was so happy to see you there. Like ah. in the trailer, I was like, that's dope. Like you look really good. <laughs> I hope I it wait. works on screen too when you see the final result. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to I want to ask you. So what's the process now? So you, so now we need more funding to get this this film out there. Um, what's the next process? What what does the future look like with the film? So the idea is to get this movie in the highest production value we can bring it. I've been very, 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 very lucky to have a really great artist behind it. But even like, but but everybody needs to get paid in order to to bring it together. So even when people are giving us a really low rate, they still need to get paid because like people working for like like you know eighty to a hundred and twenty hours, or it's it's a lot of work to work on a film. It's it's not just two or three hours out of your time. And and uh, now we put a lot of the budget that we have that I uh, funded into the production. And now we need money for post-production. So colorist and sound design and the composer and editing and like, you know, all these things that were, that we are, we need to kind of like wrap the film, but then more than anything is the film festivals mm -hmm. because the, the, the idea of this movie is to get it in as many festivals as possible 
but not only in the US, worldwide. You know what I mean? I want people, because as I told you, we, we designed this roller coaster ride, right? And and once you're sitting and you're watching the movie till it's done, you're just gonna be in a roller coaster, meaning you have no time to look at your phone or like think or you're present. Like it's all designed to keep you very, very, very present. And there's more countries around I wanna the world. watch it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll let you know once we have the first screening um, in a festival or if it will go online, definitely. Um, but as many countries that we let it experience, right? South America, Africa, Europe, like um, Asia, the US, South America, like anywhere, it's like you want people to experience the power of connection, of unity, of living in the moment of what a person that normally is so far away from your life, you know, we have this like white cis jaded male lawyer with this black rock star female trans together when she's so free and he's so stuck up. She <laughs> see life like that and he see life like that, you know, and, and, and normally when we see that, it's like, that's not gonna work. And we, when we see people, like this in our life or close to us, we are very like blocking ourselves because it's like, this is like, I can't be with people like this. They're crazy. And then you figure it out that A, coincidence is an illusion, right? There's always one crazy person in a relationship, in any relationship. And yeah. then there's a boring one, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to happen only in relationships, right? It can happen in our life adventures, too. Mm -hmm. And those people doesn't have to be coming for a lifetime, you know? They can come for five minutes, one week, three years, one month, you know? Or like uh, two hours, you know? It can happen <laughs> in a coffee shop next to you on the way to the Starbucks line or, you know? I love, I love or... people. I love people and I'm totally on board with what you're saying and just connecting and asking good questions and getting to know people, all, all different types of people. And, yeah. you know, being, you know, have a little bit of insight into what, how their life is like. And I think I'm, I don't know, I'm touched by your mission and I love it. And any way I could support you um, further, you know, I'm, I'm here for you. I love uh, it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And whoever mm -hmm. listen or will listen, like, we are doing a crowdfunding in through Seed and Spark. Um, basically, there is only three days left, and as much money that can be uh, donated will be amazing. If you can donate a dollar, donate a dollar. If you can donate twenty dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever you can donate to make a change. I mean, we are in a place right now in the world that we don't know where is it going to go, but there is only one answer in my opinion and it's art because nobody can shut up the artist as far as now and and we can create stuff that that will make people love each other and connect and be a tribe instead of being separated and 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 hate each other so it's really 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 important to if you believe in that and if you're believing in this in this movement of unity, of love, of connection, of everybody is worthy in this world. Everybody is worthy. Please get into the link, click on the link of the Seed and Spark, our fundraising, donate what you can donate, share it in your own platform. We have also an Instagram page, uh, which is The Comfort Zone Film. You can go there, you can read about the team, I took care to hire 80% of my team is women, LGBTQ+, people of color, and, and giving really, I mean, giving the opportunity to make a change and to give voice for the voiceless in front of the camera and behind the camera, because we can create something different and to show the world that, you know what, if I creating with as many different people, with as many different accents, with as many different nationalities and background and culture, we're gonna make something so dope because everybody has such an interesting creative input. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so the puzzle is gonna be so colorful. You know? Yay! <laughs> you guys, very colorful and, <laughs> and, and, and like our worlds. <laughs> yes, yes, like this world, you know? 
Like you said, I'm, it's all about the people. <laughs> absolutely. And I, I want to ask you a question, which is a hard question, and I'm not even sure how I would answer this. Mm -hmm. But since I'm looking up to you and know that you embody this, what does unconditional love mean to you? Um, unconditional love for me? Hmm. <laughs> Good question. Uh, unconditional love for me is a love with no age, gender, ethnicity, religion, um, financial statement. Um, unconditional love is two souls connecting to each other. Two energies uniting with one another. And everything outside of it, I mean, what does it really matter? I mean, I used to work in the, um, I used to work in the cosmetic world for a while and I would work with couples. Um, I'm actually coming from the anti-aging cosmetic industry, <laughs> which is very cool. <laughs> yeah, and, but I would work with couples that like you come will do with me like meetings and like appointments for kind of like, and uh, for sales and, um, and I would experience like such an interesting, beautiful souls together. I mean, it's not the mass, but sometimes I would get like a 70 years old women with like, 35 years old man that you're like, and no, she's not a sugar mama. And you would see the love in their eye necessarily. And you would see the love I've in their eye. And sometimes the, the kid, like the younger one is not a kid, but the younger one will actually the one that will finance. I've seen that too. You know what I mean? And you're like, it's almost like your mind saying, there is no, like, what? Like, how come? There's no right? rules. Like, love is love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There is no rules. Yeah. No rules. I mean, when you look at somebody's eyes, there is no wrinkles in our eyeballs. You know what I mean? There is nothing. Because then when we look at each other, we're looking at each other. How many times can you look at my cheekbones? Okay. You know what oh, I mean? Hey. You know them. So now we're really looking at each other. What? You have really nice cheekbones. So. Oh, okay. So like it was just an example, but on like my forehead, like whatever. But it's like how like how many times can you look at it? You know, it's like we're looking at each other's eyes, and the truth is in the eyes. And when people let themselves live in the moment, looking at each other's eyes, meaning forget about everything you have in your head, right? When you're looking at each other's eyes, somebody's eyes, you're connecting right away you're not necessarily can run thoughts around you because there is immediately a connection. And, and I feel like, yeah, like you say, love is love and unconditional love is, is love that come from here and it's not coming from here. You know what I mean? And in, in life, everything is possible. Whatever you want to do in your life, you can do whatever you want to be in your life, you will be. And whoever you will fall in love, it's possible to be with them. You know what I mean? Or you find interesting, like don't stop yourself because of your your mind. You know, it's that the answer. <laughs> so I have a few questions that I want to ask you um, that I ask everybody on the show. Um, but I just want to stop and just thank you for everything that you've brought to this interview so far. And I'm just, I'm moved by you, I, your message. And I just wanna thank you. I'm so grateful to connect with you. Just wanna thank Paz for connecting us. Um, mm, he's like, you guys are gonna love each other. And, and I do love you. Um, <laughs> love you too. <laughs> <yay>! <laughs> so I, <laughs> I wanna ask you, um, my first question is, do you have a favorite food and or recipe that I could put on the chopping block? Mm, if I have a favorite food or recipe, you know what? I've been adding beets into my diet. Beet, you, you eat beets? I think it's my favorite on the oh whole in the whole world. It's really good for your digestion, right? So if we eat beets, every oh, everywhere geez. from our body we're gonna start seeing everything red and it's kind of stressful but it's all good it's <laughs> doing its job it's clean it's kind of purple you know oh your mean? character yeah i thought yeah. I, I was dying the first time uh, right i'm like what's happening to like... me <laughs> do i need to go to the hospital no i ain't beat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i love my beet aragula salad do you want the recipe or i do i do i do okay these so remind me of my Nana. Yeah, so it's like a really good salad to kind of like keep cold in the fridge for the 
for a couple of days and like it helps to clean the digestion and and just like i feel like beets are helping to clean also energies from the body and just like clean, right it's kind of like replacements that's how i see it um so i put i take beets i put them in an aluminium paper and i leave them in the oven for on the temperature of 420 and i leave them there for 50 minutes and i let the beet get roasted so i'm roasting the beet for 420 mm -hmm. a temperature for 45 minutes or to an hour and then i'm putting the the beets out and you will see that it's going to be very easy to kind of like um yeah. Take the peel them. Yeah, they're just gonna peel super easily. Wash them with like with cold water, so it's actually easy to touch them, and it will be peeled with like your two fingers right away. And I cut the beet and chop them, and they take a pecan, and mm -hmm. I put it on the stove, and I kind of like stir by the pecan. It's kind of like crunchy kind of a style. So you're putting that in the bowl too. You take aragula, boom, you drop into the bowl also. <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, you're gonna put feta cheese also at the end. Um, and meanwhile, for the dressing, you're gonna use um, one spoon of balsamic, um, about two cups of uh, olive oil, and um, salt and pepper, yeah. and um, chop, uh, garlic, and putting chopped garlic inside, and one spoon of uh, Dijon mustard. Mm. So Dijon mustard, balsamic, salt and pepper, uh, olive oil, and um, garlic. You mix what's it the most What's the most important ingredient? Uh, I love garlic, you know, it's very, it's also very, it's antibiotic, yeah, antibiotic, you know, it's like we should use our the food as our nutrition, you know what I mean? It's like, if you're already yeah. eating, so boost your body too, you know? It's healing. Yeah. What do you like from, from the list? <laughs> love. Huh? What I do like, you love? I think this, the, the secret ingredient is always love. Love, exactly. Think right, about really yourself easy, and how good you're going to feel. Yeah, give love to you or the people that eat it. Yeah, mix Beautiful. it all together and like, yeah, it's a great salad to keep even in the in a box and leave it on the fridge and snack when you can. The beet is like kind of sweet and the garlic and everything inside is 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 healthy. It's benefit for the body and benefit for the soul. <laughs> this is going in the cookbook. Thank you for that. Okay. Hey. And Yay! And the next question is, if you could have a superhero power, what would that be? Hmm. Um, there's something that I like to call it flip the coin, which is like um, be able to see life from the other way. You know what I mean? It's like coin have two pictures and, and, uh, and I feel like many of us are very blind so we only see the coin from one side, but we don't understand that the coin have another picture. So the person in the other side seeing something completely different than we are. And there is no coin with two sides that are equal. So everything is, so I like to call it flip the coin, meaning like see the, try to see life from the other picture because the person seeing another picture, another story, another experience, another mindset, you no know, perspective, exactly. So, if I could like do like and make somebody like you know, <laughs> and, make, like, and make them flip the coin and like you know see things from the other way and then go back to themselves. Yeah, not judge and, it, observe it, take it yeah. in. You, you know, don't have maybe to take, take take what you like and leave the rest, kind of thing. Exactly. I think the world would be can, a better place. Even you cannot accept anything. You know what I mean? You can be like, I don't accept anything from what I see on the other side, but at least you let yourself breathe the other side. Don't just look at it and be nice one. Look at it and breathe. Meditate at least five minutes or two minutes into it. One and a half minutes. But let yourself breathe. Don't flip it before you finish to breathe at least one or two times. Let your mind be there. Let yourself see through it. And when you go back, even if you didn't agree with anything, at least you have compassion. Beautiful. The energy you're going to deliver to the other person is going to be different because it will be with a little bit of understanding. Mm -hmm. So I feel like 
I don't see that too much. <laughs> so I talk about it around my circle of friends and people, and um, and I wish that I could just like like do it for for others in sometimes because I feel like well, I think <laughs> you'll be able to do that with this film uh, for sure. I hope so I hope I will get to flip the coin for some people. <laughs> no, you can't say you hope so. You say you're going to. I will flip the okay. coin for some people, Beautiful. and I'm going to surprise you and. I'm excited for everybody to see and, and, and jump into this roller coaster together with me and my beautiful team that I couldn't do it without them. Mm -hmm. And my last question to you is, um, I don't want to dwell on anything negative, but maybe if there was something during this time or, or the production of this film and or something that was challenging that you um, work through, because this show is, is a lot about resilience and you've showed that an inspiration you showed that but maybe if there's something that you work through during this time this challenging time some people like to say um that would help inspire the audience um you know definitely the covid was very challenging because this is a production that normally we will have 20 crew members at least and this is like really small and i needed to work with 10 people and with very little sources. And like we filmed like one time we filmed in Palm Desert and Palm Springs and one location had like crazy wind. We needed to deal with like 120 miles. It's the, the wind was insanity. And then most of the scene was like inside the grocery store or in the car or one in between. So we needed to to like not a lot of people dealing with like some, some weather conditions and with the paranoia of the COVID-19. Uh, and we needed to keep the set. Like, again, I work with amazing producers that took care to keep the set so nice and responsible. And we had all the PPE and everybody needs to sanitize and you have to see that everybody's six feet away and and to, to, to let the actors feel comfortable and also to let the crew feel comfortable and everybody to create in peace. So taking care for everybody to create in peace, taking care for always hype energy when you need to take care of so much struggle and, um, and just making it happen in this such a crazy times. It's, it's, and, and, and just forgetting about everything that the world is needs to deal with in order to, to provide the world something better in entertainment. So it's, I, I guess that was the main, the main challenge, but hey, sub kuch milaga, like everything is possible and, and I think it stopped me again because I have to be able to say that. Sub kuch mila. <laughs> no, I say I say sub kuch milega, which means in Hindu everything. Sub kuch milega. Sub kuch milega. Oh, you got it. So it oh. means in Hindu everything is possible. Beautiful. And this was my motto since I'm a kid. So I always interest, like remind myself as my motto, as my mantra, sab kuch milaga, sab kuch milaga, sab kuch milaga, because everything is possible. And the, like the most random thing can happen to you in the most random time. So don't lose hope. And, and you gotta like, you know, you gotta pass the challenge when, when you gotta pass the challenge, you know what I mean? And, and believe in yourself and, let it be and i've been very lucky to let it be and with all the like a little bit of dramas or difficulties that we had or because it's it's very normal for a production life especially with all the difficulties that we had with when i got the footage i cried and i saw it and i'm like when i pitch people my movie to get the money or anything i had the like a look deck with photos of how the movie is going to look like with who is the actors that I want, how are they going to look like, what shows are they going to play at, like how popular they will be and and all kinds of things like that. And I had a very specific um, look deck, what we call like 12 slides. And and I look at the footage and I look at the look deck and I'm like, it, it's the same product, which crazy because you never know what you're going to come up with. You know what I mean? This didn't work, that didn't work, that color didn't fit or didn't. Because, like, you know, I worked with an amazing cinematographer and we plan everything, like, 
one by one and then we got it and we're like oh, we got it <laughs> it yeah. happens you know it with does. all the craziness with 10 people with minimum you're equipment you're serving something bigger than yourself and it's it's happening exactly i'm like and we were like how did it happen and people look at it and like how did you how did you film it in three days <laughs> you film it in three days like how did you make everything in three days with all the location and stations and I don't know, but it happened. So that was definitely. So now weird. we have, we're back to three days. Why do we only have three days to donate? Can you tell us the urgency of, of how Damn. important these donations are? It started about 30 days ago. Damn, <laughs> I'm late to the party. Yeah, and those are the last days that you can donate and like, you know, so please like share the link, donate what you can. Every money is being respect, respectful and we have cool incentives for credits in the movie to a poster or all kind of cool things and materials that this movie is going to have uh, as art merchandising. And um, so there is a cool trade here too. And uh, yeah, if you can donate and share, and um, basically we need to get to 15,000. We are now probably in 6,000 around that. Um, three days, a lot of money left. So whatever you can bring in, it can help for another festival. We can submit it. More audience that can see that, more change that been happening. We need to change their narrative and, and, and me and my team, my group, my uh, my um, the gang that I'm doing it with <laughs> is like we are here to spread love and and we need the support in order to spread the love all over. All right. Beautiful. Well, I'm gonna do everything in my power to support and spread that love with you. And I just want to thank you again for coming on Chopping Block. It's been an yeah. honor and a pleasure. Thank and you so much, you. Jennifer. Yeah, I appreciate you and the time and. Um, yeah. All right, that everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. I love you guys. Thank you for watching and get involved in this worthy cause and mission. And I will see you guys real soon. Love you. Ciao. Bye, people love. <laughs>